very much, Moshe. That was a fascinating talk. Um, I have written in text in English that this meeting is being live streamed on Facebook. So if you don't want your face to be shown, partly because we, I think more people can access it via Facebook than Zoom. If you don't want your face to be shown, this is mainly for Iranian <laughs> comrades who are here, uh, make sure you don't open your video. We give you the right to open your video, but you don't have to do this. So I'm waiting for indications from people here, and I will read comments from Facebook if I get them, um, when I get them. So uh, please let us start with questions, comments, Yeah. Maybe I should start. Um, I think one issue is that many people will probably want to um, consider, given right now the current situation, is a, given your um, analysis, how can we how can we move forward from where we are in a situation almost of war uh, between maybe um, at least the Cold War between Iran and Israel? Um, and um, how would that relate to the solution you propose? I'm going to take one more person and then after uh, that comrade, I'm going to ask you to respond. Siamak, you you are on. Go ahead. Um, I, hold on. I just need to allow you. Go ahead. Uh, you should. It will take a couple of seconds before you can speak. No, I'm I'm okay. I can. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. So yeah. Th thank you, comrades. Uh, especially thank you, comrade Moshe, for uh, yeah. You're very Excellent talk. Um, my question is uh, actually is very short. I was wondering if uh, somehow I understand that I agree that even uh, two stage solution is, is a bit of far reach. If it's somehow accepted uh, on an international level, wouldn't that be maybe not a bad idea to go for it for now? That, that there is. Uh, there's no other really alternative and what uh, comrade Moshe thinks about that. Thank you. Uh, Moshe, I'm going to let you two at a time so that we don't take too many questions. Go ahead. Ah, yeah. Sorry, I have to sort this out. Okay, I think now both your camera and your audio should work. Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll take your question first. I think uh, what uh, we can do, and, and this applies to uh, revolutionary uh, Israelis of both nationalities uh, and other uh, revolutionaries in the region, um, including Iranian, but also from Arab countries. I think uh, in the present circumstances of uh, repressive regimes, uh, we the the way to actually work out. A, a program, a joint program for the region, which I think is is an absolute necessity, is to to make connections abroad. I mean, this is this is what uh, uh, Russian revolutionaries did uh, under the Tsarist regime. Uh, they uh, held their conferences, uh, congresses, and so on uh, outside the country. Uh, 
And this, this applied also to other uh, revolutionary parties that were not able to uh, collaborate or to contact each other uh, in, in situ, but uh, found uh, ways of, of exchanging uh, views, exchanging uh, uh, analysis and so on, and uh, hopefully uh, elaborating a joint program uh, by uh, making contact where it is possible. Uh, it is possible in, in, in some uh, uh, countries such as uh, Britain. Of course, we have to do it in a, in a, uh, a wise way. Uh, uh, and and I think this is this is a first step. I, I, nothing nothing uh, uh, really uh, qualitative is going to to happen in the region except on a regional basis. It is impossible uh, to think of a, a, a socialist transformation in Iran. Even in Iran, which is a, 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 a huge country, or or even in in uh, Egypt, which is a huge country by itself, the region is is a, a single interconnected entity. Certainly, it is impossible for uh, uh, a socialist transformation to, to go occur in, in Israel, which is one of the smallest countries in the in the region. It has to be on a regional basis, and it has to be. By, by first of all, exchanging ideas, exchanging uh, analysis uh, on a regional basis where it is possible. I think I, I, will, I will stop in this. this, this there have been some uh, beginnings uh, decades ago, but they petered out. Uh, the, uh, in in uh, the 70s, 60s and 70s, I think mainly in the 1970s, there was a journal I've seen, which was a common forum for uh, revolutionaries from the entire region. It uh, uh, brought together people uh, uh, of like-minded uh, Marxist revolutionaries from uh, various countries of the region, and, and it, 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 it was a useful way of, of uh, uh, working towards more serious collaboration. As for the, the uh, idea that some people advocate, well, although the two-state uh, so-called solution is not a, a, a real solution, maybe it, it, it will be uh, acceptable as a first step. I think this is a dangerous solution. First of all, it is not going to happen. Uh, it is not going to happen because uh, uh, Israel is going to uh, completely sabotage any uh, real attempt to uh, implement even the, the uh, uh, very uh, crippled program that is sold under the, the title two-stage solution. The title itself is a, a deception because we are not really talking about two sovereign states. What is sold under the label of two-state solution, uh, that is to say by people who, who advocate it, Israel rejects even this limited uh, 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 version, but the uh, United States, the various uh, international uh, organizations that are committed to the so-called two-state solution, what they really advocate is uh, uh, not uh, two uh, 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 sovereign states, but a, a state and a quarter. First of all, look at the, at the uh, territorial disparity. The whole of Palestine under the mandate is, the total area is 27,000 square kilometers. It's a very tiny area. Of this, Israel, uh, within the so-called Green Line, is Israel, uh, before 1967, that is to say between 1949 and 1967, occupies uh, uh, about 78% of this territory. What is left for a so-called Palestinian state is a measly 
22% of the 27,000 square kilometers, but even not this is to be allocated. Um, the uh, uh, tiny uh, so-called state, really a Bantustan, that is being offered, uh, that is being advocated by the Americans and so on, uh, will be demilitarized, it will not have uh, armed forces. Israel, uh, the uh, most militarized, the most uh, 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 highly uh, uh, equipped with weapons in the, in, in the whole region, will, is going to be side by side with a demilitarized uh, uh, state on, on less than a quarter of the territory of Palestine. Uh, it will have the a, a prerogative of dictating who is going to be in power. That is to say, Israel uh, will be given a veto as to who can be in the government, so-called government of this uh, uh, so-called state, and who cannot be. And uh, uh, it will be left in total control of the uh, uh, airspace, of the water resources and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, uh, it, it will, it will uh, uh, be left with uh, uh, many Israeli uh, Jewish settlements still in the territory of the uh, so-called state. This is a travesty. It is not uh, something that, that uh, can, can uh, form a, a, a real solution. It is a continuation of the colonial regime under a different uh, guise. That is, that is what is being offered. The, there is no uh, 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 mention, there is no uh, uh, element in this so-called state, two-state solution as it is being offered now, uh, uh, which, which uh, uh, includes decolonization of the of, uh, 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 Palestine. I think it, it, I can sum it up in 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 uh, uh, the simplest formula. There can be no advance to a, a resolution of the conflict between uh, Zionist colonization and the Palestinian uh, Arab people without a steps towards decolonization. The the route to resolving the the conflict is decolonization. Any uh, so-called, any formula, any so-called solution that does not uh, point the way to decolonization is not a solution, it is an illusion. Thanks very much, Moshe. I have a question for one of the comrades in text, and I'm going to read it out because we have as you can imagine, it's not easy to be on this Zoom for people who are Iranian. So, thanks for uh, Nilufar is has written. Thanks for the very interesting talk. What is your evaluation about the efficacy and impact of the present so-called regional axis of resistance in addressing the issue? I mean, Iran, Hezbollah, Houthis. I know this is not exactly in the title of the talk, but I think it's an important question. So please go ahead. Uh, I think this is this is very difficult to assess. Um, I think uh, it is certainly putting the Israeli regime under pressure, but uh, where, where, where this pressure is going to lead is anybody's guess. Uh, if if it, it uh, does um, any any serious misstep, it can easily lead to a, 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 a regional major conflagration. Uh, uh, and even to a wider war. So I would say I, I would handle this with, with care. Uh, 
I'm not I'm 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 not putting myself as a strategist of the the Iranian regime or Hezbollah or uh, the uh, Yemenite regime. Uh, I think uh, it it is playing a, a rather risky game. Okay, thanks very much. Uh, can I just, um, while I'm waiting, I know other comrades had indicated, so please raise your hand if you want to speak. But can I just intervene here and say that maybe um, it is time, given uh, how many Iranians feel um, so involved in the current situation in Gaza, some unfortunately on the reactionary side, but quite a lot of the Iranian left feels part of the current struggles about Palestine. Maybe it is time to consider working even more closely together and producing a regional journal, however difficult that might be. We now have the web to use for this, and maybe it is time to collect the articles that you have written, some of the issues that Iranian comrades have written on the subject, have them in English, in Persian, and if possible, in Arabic. And if you like, re relaunch Hansin in a... Yeah, I think that, that may be a very good idea, under a different name, of course. Of course. Uh, uh, I, I would like to add something to my, my previous question. I think it, it was in some way one-sided because it it, it uh, 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 made it appear as though the initiative is coming from the so-called axis of resistance. Actually, the, the provocation, the initiative here comes from the Israeli regime. Uh, uh, to a large extent, uh, uh, this is this is uh, uh, what what the so-called axis of resistance is doing is responding to uh, uh, Israeli proactive uh, provocation. So uh, uh, it's not for me to uh, advise the uh, uh, other side, you know, of of this this how to respond to the the one side. There are, there are two, two, two sides which are uh, uh, both reactionary, but uh, of these two reactionary sides, the, the proactive uh, uh, aggression comes mainly from the Israeli regime. I think this is, this, this is obvious. I, 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 I'm not uh, revealing anything uh, uh, new. It is obvious to anyone that uh, follows the uh, actual occurrences. I mean, by actual occurrences, I mean those that are that are openly uh, available, uh, about which of, uh, open information is available. I'm sure also there are a lot of things under, going on which are not publicized. But it, the the same logic applies. I think the 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 main provocation comes from the Zionist regime. Very true. And um, I think we have made a good start. Your previous talk got a lot of viewers, I think about 800, if I'm not mistaken. And um, I think this is a good basis for starting a journal. Nilofar has written that she appreciates your responses. Thanks very much, Nilofar. Um, can I see indications of others who want to speak to ask questions? I have a lot of questions, but I don't want to dump, to um, uh, just take time just for myself. Can I see any comrades? I saw some people raise their hands and then removed it. So please, if you have, and I'm going to look at Facebook because I also have questions there maybe. Um, Okay, Torab, go ahead. Um, 
uh, Comrade Mahover knows Torab. Go ahead, Torab. Thank you, Comrade Mahover, for an excellent talk. I just wanted to follow on on what you and Yasaman were just discussing. Uh, just uh, emphasize the importance of what you both were saying. That it is about time that we actually start putting some effort into organizing some form of Middle Eastern socialist grouping that, as you suggested, at least exchanges ideas. Uh, what was lacking in this uh, last couple of months or so is the uh, impact of the movement in the more populated Arab countries like Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, uh, the workers' movement in the region in solidarity with what's going on uh, in uh, Gaza, uh, pro-Palestinian solidarity, or the re uh, reply of the workers' movement in the region. So I think all this emphasizes that we should really put some effort into organizing some form of exchange between the socialists in the region. And as you suggested, this is prob probably one of the best opportunities to raise this importance among the comrades we know and see what we can do about this. Uh, notwithstanding that there are other alternatives organized by the pro-Western type of uh, political groups in Syria or in Lebanon, you know, under the guise of socialism are actually advocating Western propaganda. So uh, uh, they are a lot more active than we are. So I think this is really, especially you, given your, you know, background and your experience of, you know, uh, working together with Arab and Hebrew socialists, I think, you know, you probably could play a major role in doing this. Uh, and I wish we, you know, uh, we could all help in this. I just wanted to emphasize this and uh, also ask your opinion. Why, why did we not see a lot of uh, active workers, uh, protest in the region against this war? Uh, as to, to your uh, previous uh, remark, uh, I think we need mainly and essentially younger people to, to participate in this. You know, uh, 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 I'm certainly too old to, to uh, uh, be a, a central figure. Uh, some of the ideas that uh, I and, and my comrades expressed, of course, are going to feed into any uh, uh, new initiative, but we uh, certainly need the younger people. Uh, as to the other question, I think appearances are deceptive. Something may be going on underneath uh, as undercurrents uh, without uh, being visible externally. I mean, uh, the, the, the most important country to uh, Arab country and, and regional country to look at is of course Egypt. The uh, uh, Egyptian working class is massive and can, when it is roused can be uh, extremely combative and effective. But experience and information from uh, political Egyptian comrades that, that we have uh, and that is available uh, tells us that uh, the Egyptian working class, while uh, it takes time to uh, uh, come out into the streets openly in, in, in revolt uh, is not uh, uh, unaware of what is going on in, in uh, uh, the Palestinian era, in, in which of course Egypt itself is, is uh, uh, intimately involved as uh, helping the Egyptian regime, helping uh, the uh, Israeli regime to uh, oppress 
the uh, Palestinian people, especially in Gaza. But uh, there is a domino effect of the Egyptian working class being aware of what is going on. And uh, as it were, it takes uh, time for the effect to be visible uh, in the streets of Cairo. This is how it happened on previous occasion. Uh, a lot of the, the activities and man manifestations and, and rebellions of the Egyptian working class were actually triggered by uh, solidarity with the Palestinian people. So uh, that what I'm saying is for all we know, something is going on, some undercurrents are going on without uh, uh, necessarily being visible in the streets of Cairo. It may come uh, in, in a delayed action. Um, I would like to add that, for example, in Jordan, it's been illegal to um, do any protests. And people have tried to express their uh, solidarity with Palestinians, but they've been arrested. So that's the problem. Oh, it's, it's illegal in Egypt as well. I mean, there, there are, there are uh, no Arab countries in, in which... Uh, uh, manifestations, op open open solidarity uh, manifestations with the Palestinians is, is legally possible. The, the, the uh, 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 current Egyptian regime is extremely oppressive and makes it difficult, but uh, uh, don't, don't, don't be fooled by uh, the uh, apparent quiescence of the Egyptian working class. It is very, uh, oh, very open and very uh, 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 much uh, uh, interested in in the uh, 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 the struggle of the Palestinian people, and it has it has effect, even if the effect is not at the moment visible. I'm already seeing that there is a lot of enthusiasm from comrades about. Uh, the initiative to start this work uh, of joint work. Uh, Moshe will know a man called um, Abbe Sirton. And uh, I remember that uh, he was under the illusion, I think he was wrong, but he thought his phone was tapped by Israeli Mossad. And whenever I visited him in Glasgow, he used to shout very loud that the woman from the Islamic Republic of Iran is visiting him. And I think this cooperation of socialists in Iran and in Israel will be a completely new arena, something that hasn't happened in recent years. It has happened in history, but not in recent years. And we should really take it up from this meeting and put it forward. Can I see indications of other questions, comments? Um, Nilofar has uh, um, said that she is keen to participate in the initiative. Thanks very much, Nilofar, and we'll take you up on that. I can't see any raised hands. Can I see if anyone has any questions? I don't want to keep Moshe too long because he's been very good to us, but uh, can I see any further comments? No? Okay. Um, Moshe, can I ask you to sum up, say anything you want to sum up? The video will go on YouTube. I think Facebook unfortunately produces its own version, but we will put the video on YouTube. And I ask comrades who have expressed uh, interest in uh, supporting this initiative to help us. Where I see the weakness is that we will need Arab comrades to help us and uh, I'm hoping that we can 
contact some of our own comrades, Hemad Shaybani and others to help us. Uh, for Moshe's information, Hemad Shaybani is a veteran Iranian left winger who in the 1970s fought in Lebanon and in Palestine. He's actually well known amongst the Palestinian movement. He speaks Arabic. And he's well known amongst the um, uh, Palestinians. I think they know him as Abu Abbas. Um, Abu Abbas, yeah. Yeah, I think that's the name they know him. Um, but um, so we will seek his help to get some Arab comrades involved, but we will also need your help. Well, we we need we need. I mean, don't don't forget the Palestinian uh, Arab, uh, including those that are relatively more free to to act, and th those that are citizens of Israel. I mean, they they are an oppressed minority, but uh, their situation and still at the, still at the moment is not as dire and as restricted as as the uh, Palestinians in in uh, the West Bank, let alone Gaza which is subject to, to genocide. Uh, to sum up, I, I, would, I would say uh, three things. First of all, we have to be patient. We cannot, we cannot uh, uh, expect things to, to, to move uh, in a revolutionary situation in the, in the immediate future. This requires a lot of patient work. It requires patient work. It, it may it may well be that I I will not live to see the, the fruition of this, but we do we do our best. Uh, there are younger people uh, that that are and should be uh, involved. Secondly, uh, don't don't fall for fake solutions for solutions that that really are at, uh, at, at, an illusion and at best even. If they are implemented, which is uh, very unlikely, they are going to be a perpetuation of the, the colonial situation under a different arrangement. That that is that is what is being uh, on offer now. Uh, continue in in every in every situation to raise the minimum demands, namely equal rights to all. Uh, not only between the Jordan and the and the Mediterranean Sea, as it, 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 we are not allowed to say, no, we're not allowed to mention this these two limits. We are not allowed to say everyone should be free and equal between the Jordan and the Mediterranean Sea. This apparently is is a no no uh, uh, formula, according to our uh, uh, lords and masters. But raise raise uh, uh, this uh, slo slogan and demand for equal rights individually and, uh, and nationally, not only in in th that area which I mentioned, but throughout the region. Uh, that is a minimum demand, and of course, the right of the Palestinian uh, uh, refugee refugees to return to to their homeland. Uh, in in addition to this, as 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 immediate as we have, of course, to protest and resist the actual genocide and ethnic cleansing that is ongoing. This is this is a priority number one. Uh, we are living in in very uh, uh, dangerous and and sad uh, times, and we have to keep our uh, head again, uh, above the water in order to survive and. Uh, to organize uh, for uh, uh, a future uh, which uh, uh, we are committed to. Thanks very much, Moshe. I think that was um, I, uh, that was a very good uh, talk, um, and I hope this is the beginning. I think we should work on this. We should uh, use existing websites, maybe a new website, maybe we can have a shorter meeting with you. I will talk to comrades here and send all their proposals in one summarized format and take it from here where we do create 
what you rightly point out that irrespective of the size of Iran compared to Israel and some of the other countries, you can't have socialism in one country and you can't have socialism in Iran, you can't have socialism in Israel, you definitely can't have socialism in smaller countries in the region. Uh, so let us take it from here and build on this so that we, do, we, if you like, match our ideals with some practical acts. So once again, I think both of your talks last time and this time have been extremely useful for the Iranian comrades. The number of people who are viewing this um, is uh, unbelievable and um, we hope to continue this. Thanks very much. Thank um, you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Comrades, thanks for all your help with admin tasks. Um, and uh, uh, I got the uh, I got various people's email. Comrades who want to help us with this, especially Iranian, and I can't see any Arab comrades, but Iranian comrades who want to help us with this journal, please send your email to um, our website, Voice of Iranian Revolution, so that we can continue uh, contacting you. Uh, some of you have done so already on the chat, but others should do so as well. So thank you very much. And we hope to continue these meetings with you, Moshe. Thanks very much.